Hi, hello everybody. Welcome back to another session of one question a day. And the question that we are going to discuss today is the mechanism of salivary secretion. A very important question. You have to be, you should not be confused with the nervous uh, control of the salivary gland or the nervous innovation of the salivary gland. This is purely mechanism of salivary secretion, but it works closely coordinately with the nervous innovation. To give a brief introduction, you start with it is composed of 99% of water and 1% of organic as well as inorganic compounds, enzymes, antibacterial, antioxidant, lysozymes, immunoglobulin, etc. The per day volume of whole saliva is about 750 to 1000 ml per day with a pH of about 6.4 to 7.4. The cells responsible for secretion are the serous, mucus and mixed as in our and that synthesizes the saliva. The saliva is transported through interlobular ducts, namely the intercalated ducts and striated ducts and interlobular ducts, this excretory duct, which finally pours the saliva outside into outside the gland. And each gland has its own excretory duct that opens outside the gland. The parotid duct is known as the stensense duct. Submandibular duct is known as the vatans, And the sublingual duct is known as the Bartholin's duct. The asina sec secretes saliva, which is collected in the intercalated ducts, goes undergo certain modifications, then passed on to the striated duct where more modification happens and it is excreted via the excretory duct into the outside surface. Here, only very, very few modifications take place, but majority modification occurs at the intercalated and the striated duct level. There are two patterns of nerve innovation or control. One is the intraepithelial and the subepithelial. And for more details on the nerve innovation, refer to the video on the nervous innovation and control over the uh, salivary gland in this channel. Now going the synthesis and release of saliva by asinars is the first step. The nerve innovation it may be parasympathetic or sympathetic, depends on the stimulus, the reflex by the mouth, by gastroesophageal, by the visceral, by the glossopharyngeal, even the sense of smell can cause a nervous stimulation, which will, via the vesicles, they act and release the neurotransmitters as vesicles. And these trigger off to release of the gymogen granules by two methods, either by exocytosis or constitutive pathway. The exocytosis, in exocytosis, the proteins are secreted by the rough endoplasmic reticulum, transported via the Golgi apparatus, packed in as primary proteins and after which the pre-proteins or the primary proteins glycosylation takes place and acted upon by enzyme to release the mature protein and which is packed in the zymogel granule secreted out of the cell. And for this to happen already, the constituent should be pre-made, constitutive pathway, immediate. Okay, the proteins secreted by rough endoplasmic reticulum are carried out by Golgi apparatus and secreted into vesicles and they're released into the plasma membrane. So the time difference is major thing. Here, there is glycosylation and uh, it is protein is formed in an inactive form and it is acted upon enzyme to form the mature protein. Here it is straight protein formation. And compound exocytosis or the, you show the difference. The presence of vacuoles nucleus histologically is the same. And here in compound exocytosis or the constitutive pathway, you find the chain of zymogel granules released subsequently in active phase as ring of pearls. The regulation of salivary secretion is by a parasympathetic which increases the serous salivary glands or thin sympathetic decreases the salivary gland or salivary secretions. The sympathetic neurotransmitters are the norepinephrine which act as the alpha adrenergic receptors to increase the protein content. When stimulated by the beta adrenergic represent there is a decreased protein content similarly for water also so the alpha adrenergic receptors cholinergic receptors and p receptors substance p receptors causes increase of calcium inflow increase of potassium outflow which subsequently leads to increased water and electrolyte secretions so this is very important the two stage hypothesis of saliva says that in the asinus, the water and electrolytes combined are combined to form the isotonic primary saliva, which is more of oh, what is it? Comparatively high to the ECF. 
and after which there is a modification potassium is secreted sodium and chlorides are resorbed leading to a hypotonic which is very similar to that or a hypotonic saliva very similar to that of your a little bit less than of your blood extracellular fluid isotonic primary saliva is equivalent to extracellular flowing hypotonic saliva is intracellular fluid equivalent to after synthesis of saliva they are modified by the ducts the primary ductal modification of saliva happens in the intercalated ducts wherein the lysozymes lactoferrins are added to the saliva the defense mechanism is stimulated here the major uh, ionic modification happens at this striated ducts that is why they have a lot of mitochondria to give power to the cells the striations are caused by the mitochondria the inorganic modification that happens are the resorption of sodium and chloride and secretion of potassium and bicarbonate into the uh, hypotonic solution the organic modification that happens is secretion of epidermal growth factor and calicarin clinical significance and abnormality in this water flow could cause xerostomia or dry mouth they could be triggered by the drugs by the parasympathetic or sympathetic drug influence or by age or lack of salivary secretion predominantly associated with some stimulus so to address xerostomia you need to know how this saliva formation occurs when xerostomia is persistent they may predispose to form sialolithiasis so drug Uh, what is it salivary abnormality such as xerostomia or talism or increase in saliva could be a side effect of drugs consumed or by the disease process themselves so you need to know these actual process of formation of saliva for a proper treatment that is the absolute clinical relevance with that we come to an end on the discussion on the mechanism of salivary secretion learn incrementally stay connected with this channel for another question happy learning till then